Hey everybody, Dr. Jesse Morris here. Hey, a few weeks ago, I put out a video on the connection between gluten and leaky gut. Today, I wanna to tell you about how gluten could potentially impact your brain. So in order to understand this, there's two concepts I need you to understand. One is non-celiac gluten sensitivity, and the other is cross-reactivity or molecular mimicry. So let's get into non-celiac gluten sensitivity first. So celiac disease is a full-blown autoimmune disease that gets triggered by gluten. Now some people think that unless you have celiac disease, you don't have any problem with gluten. And that's just not true. There's another condition called non-celiac gluten sensitivity that where your immune system reacts and responds to gluten, but it doesn't progress to a full-blown autoimmune disease. Now, when your immune system reacts to gluten, it creates antibodies. Now, antibodies are, you can think of it like a post-it note, where certain cells tag or post different things that need to be destroyed by the immune system. Now, this is where you need to understand the concept of molecular mimicry or um, cross-reactivity. So, when our immune system creates antibodies, they're created to proteins that are very specific. So the antibodies can dock onto a very specific protein. Now, the, it turns out that there's a part of our brain called the cerebellum, and some of the proteins in the cerebellum look a whole lot like gluten. So when your immune system reacts to gluten and creates antibodies, those little post-its, those can be mistakenly tagged onto the cerebellum, a really important part of your brain, and then your immune system comes along, sees those being tagged for destruction, and starts to eat them away. Now, if you have, if this process happens over and over, that can really lead to parts of the brain, in particular the cerebellum, being degenerated and destroyed over time, which then the brain really loses function. So let's recap this. So celiac disease is a full-blown autoimmune disease triggered by gluten. Now, non-celiac gluten sensitivity, which is actually more common, is, is another immune reaction uh, to gluten from your immune system that doesn't progress to a full autoimmune disease. Now, in either of those conditions, you create antibodies, your immune system creates antibodies to gluten, and then those antibodies float around in your bloodstream and start to tag, it tags gluten, and it tags other tissues that look a lot like gluten. The primary one being the cerebellum in your brain. Once those antibodies then dock or attach onto the cerebellum, your immune system comes along and destroys and attacks them. Now, your cerebellum is a super duper important part of your brain. There's actually more neurons in the cerebellum than the rest of the brain combined. So it's an area that's pretty um, uh, sensitive to degeneration and a super important area to protect. So how would you actually know if you had a sensitivity to gluten? So the thing about gluten is there's a whole bunch of different components of gluten that your immune system can react to and a standard celiac disease test only looks at a, at a portion of those. So to really get a, a clear sense of if you react, have a, a response or immune response to gluten, you have to do a more comprehensive blood test that looks at the immune reaction to all those different components. And there's, there's a few companies that do those. Another way to approach it is to go on a gluten-free diet for three, four months or so and you have to be really strict on the gluten-free diet and see if your symptoms change. Now, one thing to note is that with non-celiac gluten sensitivity, the immune reaction to gluten can be attacking other tissues in the body besides your digestive tract. So you can have a sensitivity to gluten and no digestive symptoms at all. But if you have brain fog or anxiety or a loss of coordination or headaches, and you go on a gluten-free diet and those symptoms clear up, there's a pretty good chance that gluten was causing those symptoms. And then you may want to do the more comprehensive blood test to just, you know, make sure to confirm it and really, really make sure that that's what was causing the issue. Um, so listen, if you have, if you've suspected you have a sensitivity to gluten or you've been curious about the impact of gluten, I hope this gives you some good insight. Um, as always, feel free to share this with your friends and family. 
I hope this is helpful and I look forward to seeing you soon.